Uh, Terry on time. This is the Illumi sink, and uh, apparently you put it onto a faucet, and it'll glow uh, red if it's hot water, or blue if it's cold water, green if it's uh, in between. Uh, and of course, it's got this interesting text that it's water powered, so it implies there's probably a turbine inside it. Let's uh, take it apart. So it sort of works. If I turn the uh, cold water on full, it'll turn blue, of course. And then if I turn on the hot water, it'll eventually turn red. Which is fine. Uh, the problem, of course, if you turn it on at a fairly modest rate, you can see the uh, generator doesn't create enough electricity to turn the bulb on. It's only until you get a fairly high velocity does it work. And it blinks here. So uh, it kind of works. I think they've kind of chinsed out on the uh, generator. It doesn't have enough uh, electricity generating capacity. So here we have it partially disassembled, and uh, no surprise, we can see that this uh, little fin device, of course, uh, when the water forces against it, it turns it, and there's going to be a little generator inside there. Kind of a clever cap here, you can see it's used to uh, take the water flow from the top here, and it creates uh, three streams, which of course push against these fins. First observation is, I wonder why the fins were so small, because uh, clearly this thing doesn't work at uh, modest to low uh, water pressure, and uh, they've decided, of course, to make a very small fin structure. One would think that uh, that would have been larger. Uh, no matter, let's uh, see if we can get the generator out of this uh, casing. So here's the assembly that was inside the case here. Uh, it's uh, potted, so we're going to have to strip this potting out to get uh, further into it to see what it looks like. Um, I can see a thermistor here, uh, and um, of course the LED, and uh, the generator here. And uh, some electronics, I'm sure, probably somewhere in this plane of the uh, device. Okay, let's uh, figure out the um, RPMs this thing has to run at in order to get this uh, LED to light up. I've taken some uh, silver foil and I punched out a, a little silver disc here so it's now sitting on the rotor. And, and over here I have a tachometer. And what I'll do is I'll bring in some air from a compressor and uh, that'll allow the vanes to spin. If you get enough uh, air going, of course, you can get it to light up and then we can figure out the uh, RPMs required to get this to actually uh, operate. Okay, two cameras here. We got the uh, camera showing the uh, RPM and then on the B-roll I've got the camera pointed at the little turbine. And you can see just the nozzle of the air compressor coming in. Let's see how fast this thing has to run in order to get that LED to light. There were about 2,000 RPM, it's just flickering on and off, about 4,000 RPM. Four thousand, maybe five thousand RPM to get the thing to light solid. So it clearly has to move pretty fast in order to get this thing to run. Now, one nice thing about epoxies is they uh, all have something called the glass transition temperature. If you warm them up, the epoxy basically turns into a liquid or uh, something you can very easily pry off. Uh, now, gentle heat's all that's required. Um, I have my space heater here in my workshop, and I just put it in front of that uh, for a few minutes, and then with a uh, leather glove and a dental pick, I was able to uh, slowly remove the epoxy. And that results in the assembly here. You can see there's a circuit board here and the generator's over here. Uh, now, the generator actually had a different kind of glue inside of it, basically like a hot melt glue. And then it uh, had the epoxy on top and, and wired on, as one might expect. Uh, if I insert a picture of the top part of the uh, bulb, I can see, of course, the thermistor, the LED. Then below the LED is an integrated circuit. So it looks like there's actually potentially a bit of custom uh, design here going on, so I'm surprised I can sell enough of them to justify. Uh, two uh, three-pin packages, potentially transistors or potentially voltage regulators, won't really know until we de-encapsulate them. Uh, on the other side of the assembly, uh, it's uh, just a circuit board. There's uh, no components, just soldering. The, the soldering for the leads is quite curious. The design engineer took some effort to put two holes in them, uh, the board for them to be soldered in, but you can see they just attack solder them to the pads below which I believe is a weaker solder joint. So I've got the module now just attached to a, a lab power supply, and if I power it up to about 3.7 volts, it turns on, and uh, turns on quite bright at about 4 volts. Uh, it's a little bit blue at the moment, and uh, if I touch the thermistor with a uh, soldering iron tip that's uh, quite hot, of course, uh, it should go to red here because that's um, indicating the hot temperature. And there we go, went uh, into the, the red. I guess it blinks, then it goes to green, of course, as it cools off, and then it's going to come down uh, back into the blue temperature. 
Uh, there we go. So uh, I guess actually if you want a nice little thermal indicator with a color on it, you can take these out of these modules. Um, I've seen these a uh, very similar looking uh, product on eBay for uh, considerably less uh, money than what I bought in a, a retail store. So let's take a look at the silicon. The uh, main controller there uh, isn't marked in any meaningful way. So uh, let's uh, take off the epoxy and uh, take a look at the silicon. Uh, if we uh, zoom into a corner here, we can see it's marked 3068C. I can't find any data sheet which uh, even remotely uh, matches uh, this uh, silicon. If anyone knows if, uh, about more about this part, I certainly wouldn't mind hearing from you. Uh, kind of interesting text below, though. You can see the words M1.C, M2.E, and M3.C. Those are the metallization layers. It tells you uh, there's a three, letter, three levels of metallization, uh, which would make it a, a very... A modest process node. Uh, you can get uh, up to uh, 10 layers of metal on uh, really sophisticated uh, semiconductors. If we zoom all the way out, we can see the entire silicon die. Um, there's definitely some regular uh, structures on it, uh, especially in the upper left and lower bottom. Uh, really suggests this is probably a microcontroller of some sort. Uh, the logic, of course, in the middle. If we just zoom into that, you can sort of see that classic uh, metallization running. Uh, vertically up and down, uh, the connecting a lot of the uh, gates together. So uh, that was the uh, controller on this little device. Uh, those little other uh, three uh, pin sots, uh, I've got one of the dies out. I lost the other one, unfortunately, the bath. I don't know if sure it was identical or not, but uh, uh, this is simply a transistor, and that's a classic uh, silicon uh, picture of a transistor, so a very straightforward little part. Okay, well that was what's inside this thing called the Illumisync. Uh, I got mine out of a retailer called Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, they seem to have had them in the stock. I've seen on uh, eBay a very similar looking devices uh, with uh, very similar specs. Not sure if they're identical internally. Wouldn't be too surprised. I'm sure these uh, companies just rebranding some goods from China. Um, the only drawback I saw on this one is it just simply doesn't light up if the water flow is uh, a little bit too low.